this man built the first service I use on a daily basis. Uh, he founded Dodgeball, which he sold to Google and then left. MIT calls him one of the 35 entrepreneurs under 35, and uh, it took me a month of begging to get him here. But I'm, uh, I'm really proud to present Dennis, Dennis Crowley of Foursquare. Hi. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so hi. Uh, I'm going to stand over here, so just pretend that's the other way. Um, hi, my name is Dennis Crowley. Uh, I am from New York. Thanks for having me for a couple of days. Um, I run a, uh, a small startup in New York called Foursquare. Does anyone know about Foursquare? See, that's, that's good. That's like half the people here, because I have all these slides that are kind of all over the place. What's that? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Um, so I have these, a lot of slides, and they're kind of all over the place. And the ones that go into the meat of what Foursquare is are kind of in the middle. So just kind of hold on for a second. Um, so I took that gamble, assuming that there would be a bunch of hands that went up, and I'm kind of psyched about that. Um, so let me tell you, oh, this is Foursquare. This is our logo. Um, just a real quick overview is we're trying to make things that make cities easier to use. So it's kind of like a part friend finder and part city guide. But the thing that we're doing that's a little bit different is we have all these game mechanics that we overlay on top of things. So you get points for doing things, like for going to places and going to new place, places and meeting new people and staying out late. Like we've kind of made this game into you know, Saturday nights. Um, and so we have a, like a small, scrappy six-person team. Um, we might have another person in a couple days. Um, this is our crappy little office in downtown Manhattan. If anyone ever comes to New York, you can come visit, and we'll take you out for a sandwich. Um, and I want to give, we're in Amsterdam. We're in 47 cities, and we're going to do another big round. So um, i got to thank uh, Robert and, uh, and Alpert for like, bullying me into launching the Amsterdam version way back in, uh, in April. And it took us until you know, June to launch it, but thank you. It's the same way it took you for like a month to drag me over here. you know. So thanks to those guys. Um, oh, yeah, and then this is the meetup that we went on last night, or two nights ago. We dragged a whole bunch of people out. We had like 25 people at the height of it, just you know, Foursquare users getting together. And I was pretty psyched about that, because you know, it's the first time we've really seen it. Um, and there's a little tweet about it. So anyway, this is what I want to talk about. This is where the slides go crazy. If I talk too fast, like just wave your hand, because I, I get excited and have the tendency to do that. Um, oh, and I also wanted to say that I'm psyched to go after you about what the, you know, everyone's been talking about augmented reality. And this is what augmented reality is to people, like when you hear about it. But like some of this stuff is going to talk about how, like we've been working on AR stuff forever, you know, for a whole bunch of, for years before this. It just hasn't had a fancy name to it. So, Part of you know, act one is like augmented reality and how it kind of feeds into some of the stuff that we've been doing. Um, so does anyone have a Nike Plus? Or has anyone used this thing before? Right? No? No one? Anyone? OK, so you take this thing and you put it in your shoe, and you take this thing and you put it in the bottom of your iPod, right? And you run with it, and then it gives you metrics on how you run, right? And so it's, you know, it's like video game style stats. Like imagine you're playing like an electronic arts like sports game or something, but it's based on how you've been running. And you can have like multiplayer games, like you can compete with people. So this is, you know, me and a friend of mine, you know, every morning you get up and you run, and if I run and she doesn't, I get more points for her. And there's nothing, like it sounds kind of dumb, but there's nothing more motivating uh, in terms of running than like getting to compete against someone else. So if it's like raining on a Tuesday morning and you'd rather just sleep, like this is the thing that can get you out of bed and get you to go. You get points for doing stuff in the real world. And it's kind of like, maybe you don't realize it until you start competing with someone, but it's kind of nuts that it works that way. Um, and then, you know, as you beat people and as you get your fastest mile, like it's basically it's a high scoreboard for things that you're doing. Like that's my fastest mile. These are the trophies that I've won from competing against other people. You know, um, these, you know this is the metric that I'm competing against with myself whenever I exercise. Um, so Nike does all these little social things too, like they allow you to map out your runs, and you know, people do these all over the city. And so like, you basically have all these people that are running, playing this like, one player game, or maybe it's a two player game, but you know, they're competing against themselves, collecting their own data. But I went for this run one day, this is the Williamsburg Bridge in Manhattan, and when I was running, I ran over one of these guys, like someone spray painted on the street, and I'm running, I'm like, shit, I should get like, an extra guy for running over that, right? Because that's the that's Super Mario thing. And, and then I started like Googling it around, and I'm like, man, people, there's like, you know, street art that people put like 8-bit graphics all over the place. And, you know, it's like a Super Mario mushroom here, and there's one over here. And it's like, wow, wouldn't it be a lot more fun if you were doing things in the real world, but there were like power-ups that you could get? And it would make the same old run like a little bit more exciting every time. 
Um, and so this is kind of like the first time I had like this augmented reality like vision like shit This is exactly how the world should work, right? And so we go skiing all the time It's like well, why ski the same trails when you can pick up power-ups all over the place? You know and so this is kind of the way that we've been viewing the world for a little bit um, And I wanted to also mention this other project called Pac Manhattan, which is kind of related to this stuff Does anyone know this project or seen it? Oh, sweet. This is awesome. Uh, so this is something I did back at NYU. Kind of, it's like poor man's augmented reality. Um, and, you know, it's like what we, we have this, um, this is a, a, for a class at, at ITP. This is weird, you know, art tech program at NYU that I went to. And this is one of the, you know, it was a, a class called Big Games. And this is one of the projects that came out of it. And so we took this, this is right when Google Maps came out. And like, okay, this is what NYU looks like. And if you rotate it, it's a Pac-Man board. You know, and it's like, oh, what we should do is we should, you know, be adults that dress up like Pac-Man players and we'll get in the middle of the street and just like run around. And, you know, we tried to make this work with technology. Like we were going to get backpacks with a laptop and antennas, like we had helmets with antennas and GPS. And it was like super, super nerdy, but we couldn't figure it out. Like the GPS wasn't working the right way. Like the network connections weren't there. Remember, this is a couple years ago. Um, but we really wanted to make this happen. So we used like the super low tech way of, you know, we had like basically people on the street that were running around like playing the role of the characters, you know, um, you know, running through the streets, supposedly connecting the, collecting the dots. And then we had people up in this, like, this extra, um, you know, this room above NYU looking down onto the streets. And, um, you know, these folks were kind of, you know, controlling the people that were, that were, that were running around. Like, they were looking at a piece of software that was like this. So as I, you know, everyone had a map on their arm. So as I, you know, as I get to, you know, the intersection over here, I'm looking down, I'm like, hey, I'm on the phone, by the way, that's the connection. So I'm on the, the people on the street are on the phone with the people in the control room. I'm like, okay, Pac-Man here, I'm on C5. And then they would drag the icon from C5 to C4 to C3, and the dots would disappear. Um, and then what you would happen is like, you know, you've got five people that are looking at this. One's playing the, the role of Pac-Man through me, and you've got four that are playing the role of the ghost, who are also down in the street. And they're trying to coordinate each other, and like, we're on the street, we don't know what's going on. You know, you really can't see where all the players are until you get that feed in your, you know, through your ear set letting you know what's happening. So anyway, it was kind of like our first attempt at, you know, let's take a video game and drop it in the street and see what's, what happens. And, you know, I wish I had some better photos, but what happened is that, it, it, like we were just like a freak show. It was like performance art. Like we're all running around doing this stuff. But we, you know, the the rest of the people that were in the park, like on their way to school or running their errands, like we thought they would interfere, like roadblock us. But instead, they got really into it. And so you'd be, you know, if you're Pac-Man, you're running down the street, you'd get chased by little kids. Um, or if you were. Um, you know, like the doorman that's standing like in this fancy like Washington Square Park apartment, like, I'd run by and he's like, don't go that way, there's a ghost. You know, and they're like, man, it's like people are getting into it. It's like interactive, like performance art that's kind of like this, this game. So it's like, I mean, this, it was so much fun. We played it twice, I got a ton of press. But what we wanted to do was like take this stuff and like extend it back out. And that's where kind of, you know, the let's turn running, let's turn skiing, let's turn all these other things into a game ideas kind of came from. Um, here's my friend Megan. She was the first, like in our class, like she caught Pac-Man once, so she got to be Miss Pac-Man with the bow. Um, and that's her, everyone had the map, like total nerds. So, and you can see she's running with her, her cell phone here, here. So, I mean, and we, we should do this again with iPhones. We just don't have the time to do it. So, um, oh, just one other thing I wanted to mention, kind of before we go into like some of the Foursquare stuff, is that if I'm going crazy on time, by the way, just let me know. Okay, all right. I, um, so, this, do you guys know this guy, Nick Feltron, Felton, and he does the Feltron annual reports? Yes? Sweet? Awesome. Okay. Um, so, this guy, he's a designer in New York, and he makes, like, I don't know how he does it. He must walk around with a notepad, uh, and just, he, he writes down everything that he does. Like, he uses, like, public APIs from, like, Flickr and Last.fm and all these other things. But these are the cab rides I've taken. These are the people I've interacted with. These are the beers that I've had. These are the types of beers that I've had. Um, these are the songs I've listened to most. I think I have another screen of, oh no, of other stats. But I mean, you get this annual report from him that looks like an annual report from like GE or something. And it's 20, it's 20 pages of what this guy's done, you know, over the last year. And it's like, man, these are kind of like metrics that you could use for personal development, like scoring yourself. Like, did I see more movies than I did last year? Am I a better person because of that? Did I meet more people? Did I exercise more? Like, did I take cabs more or less? Whatever. I mean, it's kind of like personal metrics that can be, I don't know, make, make your life better, I guess, if you pay attention to them. And if you look around, like, there's, you start to see score in everything, so, right? So maybe, you know, 
it, you know, oh, I'm, I'm on the, the leaderboard for Twitter followers or fr Facebook friends, or maybe someone's doing better than me because they've got their inbox down to zero, and my RSS reader is, is super high. Like, even if you sing karaoke, it scores you at the end of it. You know, so it's like there's score kind of built into these things, and it's like once you start obsessing over, like, competitive stuff and, like, comparisons, you kind of see these numbers, and you're like, oh, I should make something out of these numbers. Um, and so that's kind of, like, act two. Like, how do you use software? I'm going to get a drink. Hold on. Because I'm like, <laughs> super dry in the mouth. OK, anyway, so how do you use software to change behavior or make people more adventurous? So the Foursquare stuff that we're working on is kind of like an experiment that, uh, like an ongoing experiment to see if we can make this stuff work. So I used to run this, this company called, uh, not even a company, it was like a project called Dodgeball. Um, and it was like a very, very early mobile social thing. Like, You'd say, hey, I'm at the bar, and you'd text in this before we had fancy phones. Uh, and then you would just know where your friends are. Like, everyone in the world's doing this. Like, basically, we're copying what we were doing a couple years ago. Um, and there's, you know, 100 different startups are doing this stuff. Um, but what we found, you know, here's a bunch of like, Google Attitude has their own. You know, we brought it to Google, and just, like, it didn't work out, so we went on and did other stuff. Like, BrightKite's another one. You know, the world guys are doing it. I mean, there's a ton of startups are doing this stuff. Um, but one of the things that we found is that we started sending out this newsletter, and we were ranking people. Like, hey, guess what? I've been out more than you have. And once we, start, once we turned it into a leaderboard, the usage shot way up. It's like people wanted to be high on the list, or some people wanted to be low on the list. Um, and it's just like, man, we just kind of turned a little bit of nightlife into a game. So let's see if we can expand on this like a little bit more. Um, so this is where this talk is kind of crazy. Anyway, so I went on this, this, um, this vacation, like in between Google and my next job, which turned out being Foursquare. And it was, um, I went all around, um, uh, you know, like Sweden and Helsinki and, and just, I was with my roommate from college at the time. Um, and, and instead of um, like going with a guidebook, I basically just like crowdsourced the whole thing. And this is like, you know, two years ago. And so I put it up on Flickr and put it up on Twitter. And it's like, hey, if anyone has any suggestions on places to go, um, let me know. And I basically just got this laundry list of stuff. And the stuff wasn't like, oh, go check out the palace at Center Square. It was, and it wasn't, you know, touristy stuff. It was go to this cafe, sit at this particular chair, and order this, you know, this meal uh, because it's unlike anything you'll get anywhere else. Or go to this bookstore and go in the basement and check out these crazy statues. I'm like, man, this is like the best guidebook ever because it's been written by my friends Taylor to me. And I was like, we should make something that allows you to bring this anywhere you go. Like, you should basically have this kind of a guidebook in your, in your home city. Um, and so anyway, this is like where the original Foursquare stuff came from. Um, but this is what it looks like today, right? This is the same slide I showed before. Don't tell anyone. Um, and so, you know, we have a couple things that are going on. Like, we, people use the app to check into places. And, like, checking in is the process of, like, opting in with your location. So if you look at this, I took this last night when I was working on these slides. Um, and you basically, like, you get a list of where all your friends are, you know? And it, it's work. Do, do you guys use friend finder apps at all? It's like, they're catching on, or anyone play with them? Like, when you know, it's kind of like Twitter, like, it, your life is better when you know what people are, what your friends are doing all the time. Whether it's, you know, what they watched on TV, or what they thought about what they watched on TV, or what they ate for lunch. Like, all, like you know, just knowing about what people are doing, and specifically knowing their location, it's just, it's really interesting. It makes these things a lot more, it makes meetups a lot more serendipitous. It makes these things happen more often. It just makes things a lot more interesting. Um, but then what we have is we have all these people that are checking in all the time. And, you know, basically we can, instead of spitting back a list of just what's nearby, sort of by lat long, which is what a lot of people do, we can just run the data in the same way, where's Ted, is he still here? Hey, what's up? Hi. Um, in the same way that some of the stuff you're doing, like, we kind of do the same thing in which, you know, we're ag aggregating all this location data, but then we chop it back up. And it's like, oh, well, of all the places that are nearby, these are the ones that are your favorites. These are the ones that your friends have been to. These are the ones that your friends have been to that you haven't been to. These are the ones that your friends haven't been to, but they said they want to go to. There's a thousand different ways you can chop up this data. So you can basically make, like, these smarter type of city guides you just carry with you all the time. So that's another one of the things that we're doing. Um, but you know, going back to the checking in thing, you know, people will say, oh, I'm checking in at this place. And then that's when we start giving points. So um, I kind of, this is a kind of mashed up screenshot. So it's, you know, it's, it's this place combined with a check-in thing from Starbucks. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah, so you get five points for being there the first time. You might get another point for, um, for be it being your first stop of the night. Uh, you'll get two or three other points if you're bringing friends there. It's like all these different things that we're working on that will try to incent and motiva uh, motivate people to do things that they haven't done. Maybe to like get on their bike or go to the other side of town and go to a restaurant they haven't been to. Or even like drag a friend to that restaurant because they'd be getting more 
points for it. Um, and then we have these other game mechanics like the mayor. Like the mayor is just this thing where whoever's been there the most times becomes a mayor. And um, you know, it's a simple little thing that we built in, but people go nuts over this. Like people will, will choose one coffee shop over the next coffee shop because they want to stay the mayor there. People will like, you know, hit the same sandwich shops because they want to steal the mayorship back from someone else. Like they get really competitive and like we send out these tweets that's like, hey, you just stole the mayor from such and such. And then users will talk shit to one another back and forth on Twitter, which is like another unexpected kind of awesome side effect. Um, and then, you know, based on all these points, we kind of just make this leaderboard so we can tell you, oh, who's on top, who's, uh, who's doing the most adventurous stuff, um, you know, who's kind of falling down the rankings. And it's something that people just kind of, you know, pa passively pay attention to. And it's supposed to be this, this type of metric that lets you know, like, who's doing interesting stuff. Um, and then, sorry, we keep the, like we have these things called badges. It's like a lot of just like game mechanics thrown in on top of the city guide. But the, the badges let you, you know, they're basically like little badges of honor that you get for doing certain things. Like if you go to too many karaoke bars, we give you like the, you know, journey don't stop believing badge. If you go to too many barbecue places, you get the porky one. If you stay out like really late on a Tuesday night, you unlock school night. And so, you know, there's a, there's a cheat guide on Wikipedia that someone put together, a bunch of people put together, they're basically like cheat codes and how you're supposed to unlock these things. And we find users trying to figure out how to do it and, you know, oh, how do you get the entourage badge or how do you get the slut badge or the player please one, which a whole bunch of people here were trying to get the other night. Um, but it's, it's, it's like candy, like little rewards that we built into the game. And it's kind of like, it's like this, like it, it turns people into this guy, right? And, you know, we've, we've defined like these hundred little, you know, things that you can possibly do in this world that we've created, this like pseudo augmented reality thing. It's not this type of augmented reality, but it's like, you know, augmented reality in the sense that like, hey, my dinner is now a game and the after party for this is now a game. Like you were saying, what, 50 people checked in here? Like we should all get more points because 50 people checked in here. This is like a big thing. We should be, get points for being part of that, you know? So those are the things we kind of have to build up. Um, but what we're seeing is like as people try to like, they go nuts over some of these things. So here's like a gym rat badge. You get the gym rat badge by going to the gym 10 times in a month. And we get feedback like this all the time. It's like, I'm now going to the gym because Foursquare told me to do it. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. Like we got to figure out how it's interesting. But in the sense of, you know, when I go back to New York, you know, I, I hit up the five places in my neighborhood and, you know, me and my friends, we get in the rut of doing the same thing over and over again. And maybe some of you guys do that too. And it's like, how do you use game mechanics to help people get out of that rut, to help make people more adventurous? Um, so here's, you know, here's two little quotes. There was a story in the Times about us, about, you know, someone that said that they, you know, got up out of bed in the middle of the night to go wrestle away like a mayorship from someplace because they saw someone check in. And then Fred Wilson, like one of our investors, being like, you know, I want coffee from here, but I'm going to get it somewhere else because I need to get the mayorship back. So it's like, you know, it's like this game that you're, it's not a game that you sit down and you play Monopoly for an hour or, you know, you sit down and you, you're playing, you know, Legend of Zelda for eight hours straight or something. Like you play this all day, every day. And, you know, people might get exhausted by it, but other people are just kind of into it. It's like something that you're playing like every little bit of the day. Um, okay, a couple more here. And so, uh, <laughs> so this, other, this, is, this is like the tip screen. This is the thing that needs the most reworking. But remember I was talking about that trip that I took with my, my, um, uh, my roommate going around. Like these, this is the implementation of that idea like in the app. And so anytime you, like anywhere you happen to stand in any of like the 100 cities that we'll be in by next week, we're in 50 cities now. Anyway, anywhere that you stand in those cities, you can open the app and it gives you a list of things that you should do nearby. And it's like, you know, try this beer here, order the apple pie, you know, give, if you're a regular, give the name of such and such. I mean, it's just stuff that you would never ever think of all coming from your friends. Um, and then what we're finding is that as people check in to certain people, certain places, we pop these messages up. This is one from New York, where if you're at one of the restaurants um, you know, in my neighborhood and you check in, it just pops up this message it's like, oh, since you're so close, go across the street and try this thing. You've probably never heard of it. You've probably never been to this place. You probably would never try it unless the app specifically told you. But it's one of those things we're trying to push it at users. So it's like, you know, it's kind of like getting a review, but getting it like a drip at a time, you know? So it's just like a different model for some of the interaction. Um, using this stuff in Amsterdam, uh, this is the one tip that popped up from this place we went to last night. Uh, fall flat on your, stair, your ass when walking down those crazy stairs. Uh, do you guys know this place? This is, this is one of the stops that we had on the Foursquare call. But these things were popping up kind of all night. I wish I took a better screenshot of it. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of like typical 
Twitter feedback that we get from folks. Like, I feel like I'm living a more, you know, a more interesting life when you play by the rules of the game. And, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how do we, like, how we feel about that. Is that a good thing that we're changing? I think it's a good thing that we're changing behaviors. Like, is it a kind of a, a weird thing? I don't know. It's like people are still kind of getting used to it. And, you know, just like Twitter took a long, peop a long time for people to grasp, I think we're kind of in that same, you know, that same thing right now where people are like, I don't really get the value out of it. Once you start getting those tips and stuff, you're like, okay, now I start to understand what's going on. Um, so anyway, so this is, like, just two more, like, game analogies. This is like a check-in history. This is what I've done since I've been here. And this is the type of stuff that we do. Like, you tell us where you are, we spit the data back at you, we try to make some recommendations. Um, and so starting at the bottom, like, me at JFK to last night working on these slides. Um, and you can look at this and it's like, you know, it's like I got 24 experience points or whatever, you know, for going to these different places, you know? And it's kind of, this, you know, the same, I'm like beating the idea down, but it's like kind of this, the same thing that we're, uh, you know, kind of exploring, like giving, you know, physical metrics that are tied to these. And one of the places, you know, this place, it was, it was Looks, right? The place we went to? Anyway, it reminded me a lot of like one of my favorite places back in Manhattan, right? And, you know, all the places that, that, you know, we've been, I was like, oh, this place is really kind of cool. And, you know, even the last time I was here, I was here for Picnic in 2007, and I don't remember any of the places. I do remember them, I just, I can't remember where they are. You know, but now, next time I come back, it's like, all right, well, now I have something to start with. I know that these are some of the places I like. I kind of remember the area. The app can help me rediscover it. And finding that is like finding the boomerang in Zelda. You know, it's like, it's like unlocking a little bit of treasure. It's like, oh, man, I found something that I can use the next time I come back here. You know, and it's like, it might not be for a couple months, it might not be till, you know, six months, but it's still like I've got this kind of persistent element that's letting me know uh, the things that I'm really enjoying in a particular city. Um, and so this is, you know, going back, this is some, another part of the site that we have like these stats that we're spitting back to users, um, which, you know, kind of look a lot like the Nike Plus stuff. So you can see where some of the, you know, some of the inspiration and whatnot um, kind of come from. Um, and then, have you guys seen this? Yeah, it, probably everyone saw it. I gave this talk the other day in, uh, I think it was in San Francisco, but there's, um, there's this, if anyone knows the name of the group that did this, no? So, what was it? Volkswagen? Like the car? Oh, no way, okay. So they were trying to make something, it's like, it's an interesting design problem, right? So you've got, you've got escalators on one side and you've got stairs on the other. Like everyone knows that, you know, it's healthier to take the stairs, you should take the stairs. Like no one wants to take the escalator. But how do you make taking the stairs, you know, how do you make it take it, you know, how do you make that more fun than taking the escalator? And it's not like, it, you know, it's, it goes back to the same, like, how do you incentivize people to exercise that don't or to, you know, travel that don't or to read more that don't or whatever it happens to be. And their solution was to make the steps playful. So they turned it into, you know, they turned it into a piano. And as you run up and down the stairs, you know, it starts making different noise. You can imagine how this thing works. But they found, like, as they put their little hidden camera here, 66, you know, more people ended up taking the stairs and taking the escalator. And it's not like a, it works because of game mechanics. There are no game mechanics. But, like, they made the taking the stairs more fun than not taking the stairs. And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of room for innovation in a lot of the stuff that people talk about here, just by making the things that are already pretty familiar to us, friend finders, city guides, like all the stuff that we're doing online, just taking it and adding playful elements, like making this stuff more fun. So like we look at these things, it's like, how do you make, you know, how do you make finding a restaurant feel more like Pac Manhattan? Or how do you feel, you know, how do you make discovering new places and dragging your friends places, um, how do you make that feel more like Super Mario or Zelda or something? Um, and so act three, is, I think I did act two, right? Was just some other things that I wanted to talk about that I, don't, I wasn't sure if I was gonna fit them in or not. Um, but basically, like, software that makes it easier to get lost and like, con some contextual awareness stuff, right? So, you know, I'm, I've been lost, oh no. I've been lost uh, every, where's my map? Because I'm lost without it, oh no. But I had it in my pocket so I could use it as a prop and I've already lost it. But, um, you know, I've, I've been trying not to use my iPhone because it's so expensive with the stupid data plan. So I've been sticking by the map, but I'm still trying not to use the map as much. But, you, you know, with the stuff that we're, we're building, it's specifically designed, you know, a lot of the stuff is designed so you don't get lost. So you never go down that wrong street and never discover the sushi place you wouldn't have found. Or you never get lost and have like a better understanding of some weird neighborhood. And it's like, it's almost like it's a good thing to get lost, right? Um, and you know, people have been asking, like, oh, why don't you use your map? Or why don't I'll mark it on the map for you? I'm like, no, no, I just want to find the stuff on my own because it's not, it's not very often that you get to come to like a relatively new city and get lost completely without, you know, without the, you know, where you don't have like the crutch of technology to rely upon. And like even coming, even last time I was here in 2007, like I didn't, you know, from last time to this time, um, I'm much more apt to like, you know if all hell breaks loose, check out the phone so I'm not late for dinner. As opposed to, you know, two years ago when I didn't even have the iPhone, I'm like, I'm just screwed. I don't know, have any idea what to do. Um, so there's this idea of, like, you need to know those messages were popping up. 
Like, since you're so close to such and such, you know, everyone's talking about that stuff. We make, you know, maybe ours are a little bit smarter than like that, you know, the coffee shop model everyone talks about. Like, oh, every time you walk by the Starbucks, it's gonna ping you with a coupon. Um, which is really, it's like Clippy in your pocket all the time. Like, if this is annoying on your screen, you guys know Clippy, right? Yeah, then it's gonna be even more annoying in your pocket when it's reminding you of like everything you need to eat, drink, see, go, do, whatever. So it's just one of these things that like, we're very conscious about trying to avoid. I don't think we're there yet because usually you get the pop-up when you're, you know, when you're, um, when you're in the app as opposed to just like randomly walking around the street because the iPhones aren't passively location aware. But as that stuff changes, like now that all the Android phones can kind of run apps in the background and you know, are aware that like maybe when I step right on this spot right here, that's when the coupon goes off. That's the, that's the scary thing, right? Because we're getting, we're getting close to that and I don't think we're ready for it yet. And like, we'll probably start pushing out some messages and we'll say, oh, but they're messages that your friends wanted you to see so it's more relevant. But then you think of like the minority report uh, you know, you've seen the movie Minority Report, like all those sketchy scenarios where every step I take is another trigger, and then it's just like, it's just overwhelming. Um, and then this is like, this is another, oh, talking about like contextual aware computing. Um, this is an app uh, in New York, it's called uh, Urban Daddy, they have like this website. Do you guys have this out here? Anyone? No? Okay. And so they, they've really nailed this thing, like the, the whole context about it. So, Everyone talks about like, oh, you know, location is the, the end all, be all of all the, of the context, but it's not. It's like the beginning. It's like, okay, so what? We know where you are. We know that you're in the city or in this neighborhood or at the street address, but it's like, now what? And like the whole point of the Foursquare stuff is like, is the now what? You know, it's like, okay, now that you're here, let's tell you about interesting nuggets. We'll tell you what to order. We'll tell you what to do next. We'll give you points. We're just trying a whole bunch of stuff, trying to see what fits. Um, these guys are like specifically asking more questions about context. Like, Okay, it knows, okay, the time and the date, you know, I'm somewhere here, I'm looking for brunch, and I'm with this person. Now, the context stuff is what the phones don't do yet. Like, the phone, my phone should be smart enough to recognize that I'm in a room with, whatever, 200 people that I've never met before, some of you guys might know each other, and, like, it should be able to send that contextual information, you know, back, to, or, or at least feed some of the stuff that we're doing. But the phones just can't do that yet. I think that's kind of the next step. Um, asking the user to do it is, like, a good way to get around a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, going back to this screen, like we're going to take a stab at some of this because, you know, if you strip away, you know, kind of the, the, conte the, the contextual stuff that I've added, you know, you've basically got a list of places and the timestamps at which I've been there. So you can tell like, okay, well maybe, you know, Cobalt is good for like an after dinner drink because it was nine o'clock. Or maybe, you know, Looks is great for, you know, a late night spot because it was at three o'clock. You know, you might also assume the same thing for bubbles, but that was, that was a disaster, you know, so you can tell how the, you know, the, the data works or doesn't work. But, you know, you look at the, you, you cut this data up for us in New York, and we run, like, we don't have this built into the app yet, but we basically, you know, the, our little team of six, before we go for lunch, it's like, all right, run a query that shows where all the other Foursquare users go for lunch that none of us have been to lunch yet. And it's like, you know, it's like we have this little insider look at the data that it's our job to kind of make things and then push them back out to the users so they can do that same type of stuff. And I think that's kind of the, you know, the big idea behind a lot of this. Like, you know, everyone thinks of like, Twitter is like, oh, it's the now. And Twitter's all about like what happened in the last five minutes. And then Twitter search makes it, you know, what has happened in the last eight days. I think it caps at like eight or 11 days, right? But, you know, people look at this the same way. It's like, oh, yeah, Foursquare lets me know where my friends were like two hours ago, whatever. But really what we do is we have this data about what a whole bunch of people have been doing for a long period of time. And this is where it gets really rad is that we can start cutting this stuff up to be like, oh, you're in San Francisco for the first time. You know, we can see based on the time zone in New York, you would normally get coffee at this time. And so let us recommend some coffee places um, that your friends have been to based on your location. So it's like, it's kind of nuts that we're getting close to being able to do that. And this is like, you know, this is our version of augmented reality. You know, people talk about this user experience where you're holding the phone up and it's covering your face, but the experience we're trying to do is, you know, anticipate what you want, you know, before you think about asking the phone the question. You know, we're all conditioned to be like, oh, I need to know the time of the movie, let me ask my phone. I need to know the location of this, let me ask my phone. But there's a big opportunity to have, you know, the phone just be smart enough to listen to contextual triggers and then come up and say, you know what, I bet you probably want coffee now and you're near someplace interesting. Or I bet you want to meet up with this person that's a couple blocks away and we can make that happen. So I think that's where this stuff gets really kind of awesome. Um, so you're not allowed to come to like a big tech thing without announcing something. So we, we are officially announcing our API today. Uh, yeah, sweet. So um, 
you guys have like a one hour head start before like TechCrunch because I got the time zone thing screwed up. Uh, <laughs> I was like, seven hours, right? No. <laughs> so I was asking him like, how many hours ahead are we again? Uh, so yeah, you can play it here, api And um, we got a whole bunch of awesome, like we've been working on this for a while and people have been trying to use it. But the, um, the layer guys have, have built us like a Foursquare layer already, which is kind of awesome. And I haven't had a chance to play with it, but they sent me some, some screenshots already. And uh, you know, wanted to give a shout out to these guys while I'm here. Uh, and if anyone has it up and running, I, I definitely want to take a look. Um, but I think. Uh, Wait. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Layer Headquarters. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, okay, that's my bad. Um, I was like, can someone translate? Because I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it is. It is kind of awesome. So, um, you know, so thank you for those folks. Um, but then that's kind of that's it. Did I go my 20 minutes? Is it good? I did? OK, sorry. But uh, yeah, that's it. You can find me on email or on the Twitter. And happy to answer any questions or whatever you guys have. So thank you very much. <laughs>